Hi, everybody. I'm Peter Schrager. Uh, I'm the host of the NFL Network's morning show called Good Morning Football. I've been asked by the Buccaneers to host this panel today, and I could not be more thrilled to be with all of you. I'm seeing all your faces back here at the Zoom, and I'm, I'm overjoyed to see all of you guys are in this room. But let me introduce you to the panelists that I'll be joined by. These are some of the best personnel people in all of football, some of the most highly respected uh, scouts and executives in the NFL. The first is the vice president of player personnel for the Buccaneers, a gentleman named John Spytek. John, why don't you say hello, hello to everybody? How y'all doing tonight? Great to be here with you. Hope, uh, hope you enjoy the next hour. I think you will. We've got a, good, a lot of good things here to talk about. John's going to explain what he does and what his two colleagues do as well. The director of college scouting for the Super Bowl champion, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, a gentleman named Mike Beal. Mike is with us today as well. Mike, say hello. Hello, everybody. Happy to be here. And the assistant director of pro scouting is Alex Smith. Alex, say hello to the crowd. Hello, ladies. I'm glad I can be a part of this event. I'm really looking forward to it. This is going to be awesome. Now, let's first go through what the three gentlemen in red do on a day-to-day -day and what differentiates their jobs from each other. John, why don't you start off? Mike, you'll go after that. Then Alex, you take us home. I'm the vice president of player personnel, so I kind of sit um, above both the college and the pro departments um, here in Tampa. It's my sixth season doing it, and so I kind of bounce back and forth between some of the advanced scouting we do, so upcoming opponents, uh, upcoming free agents throughout the league. Um, always about a week or two in advance of, of our upcoming games. When I have time during this time of year, I also bounce over the college side and work a lot with Mike. And that is really geared towards a couple, you know, and Mike will fill you in a little bit more as this goes on, but a couple events, you know, this all-star games, the combine, and then eventually the draft in the, in the month, in the month of April, late in April. So kind of on the, when you're on the college side, all eyes towards late April, no matter what time of year it is. And let those other guys tell you what they, what they do on a day-to-day. -day. My main job is just like John just said, is to get ready for the draft in April. So everything that I do is geared towards that time. It's certain points of the year. Once we kind of get past free agency, we'll get Alex and the other pro guys involved in the process a little bit. We'll use our scouting assistants. So it's kind of all hands on deck when it comes to, to getting ready for the draft. For me, I've been in the pro scouting side going on my fifth season now. Uh, I think it's probably the easiest way to explain what I do is to break it up in seasons. Uh, so we kind of just wrapped up uh, our training camp in preseason. Um, during that time, all the rosters have 90 players on them. So we have to constantly uh, you know, evaluate every other team. We're always looking to see if we can improve our roster. That's kind of how we start out uh, our year. Then we'll transition, as you heard John allude to, uh, our advanced of our uh, upcoming opponent. During that time, we're going to be writing reports on all 53 players. We'll be presenting them to the coaches. And uh, kind of during that time, we're um, preparing our free agency list as well. So once the season uh, ends, we kind of transition into uh, what would be free agency and also our post-college draft stuff. It really is year, year around, but we're always doing something different, but uh, definitely keeps you busy. And as you sort of mentioned Mike, and I'll bring this to, to you first. You have five different directors, but you guys have scouts beneath them. And there's an entire organization within the organization for scouting. And I know you've been in the league now 24 years. Mike, not to put you on the spot, but mm -hmm. let's go to 1998. You're in the same position that a lot of these young women are right now. How do you first get in the NFL? Who's the first letter you write? How does your, how does your story begin? Because I think that's the hardest thing, breaking down those walls and just getting your foot in the door. Yeah, that's, I was very fortunate to get an internship um, to work at training camp. Back with, I started with the Buffalo Bills. Luckily, I had a connection, was able to get the internship. I worked training camp actually for two years, and then I stayed on for a whole season, uh, long internship, which back then – that was for free. So. What do you tell your parents in that situation? That was hard. That was hard to uh, to explain to them like what I really wanted to do here, and, and hard for them to understand like what I was trying to to do with my my life. But they always knew that sports is, was what I wanted to do, and you know, just I, I was always passionate about that. And then, of course, once I got into the Bills organization, and they were coming off those four Super Bowls, and I got to see like how a team was actually built and stuff. I just, you know, fell in love with the process. John, I, I'll say this with all the people that you've worked with, you've now 
been a part of organizations with Bruce Arians, one of the best head coaches in NFL history, but also Tom Brady, Peyton Manning. Uh, when you were starting off your career, what, what was the most important part about networking and trying to soak up the most with absorbing information from some of these great leaders that you've come across? First thing I tried to do, it's pretty basic, is just listen. You know, I think you've got to understand that you're, you're getting into a field um, that is hyper competitive. Even when I was coming in, I didn't have a lot of experience. I had this goal to be a scout. I didn't really know what it was. So I kind of had this idea in mind of what it was going to be, but you know, I, I didn't know. And so to me, get around these guys and listen, like, this is what it takes. This is what you're looking for. These are the hours that you're going to be putting in. They're helping you grow. They're helping you understand what it's going to take. And then you have to make a decision at some point, like, is this what I really want to do? And thankfully for me, I was around so many good people. Um, that gave me opportunities, that gave me knowledge, um, that gave me chances to prove myself. And then it was really up to me at that point once they had kind of prepared me to take advantage of it. You know, don't be deterred, but listen, be open-minded, um, take, uh, take chances, take risks. And, you know, if you're passionate about it, it'll work out. Now, Alex, coming from your background, and you can explain what you were doing before you were in this, in this job, um, maybe there were some unexpected barriers to entry for you saying, ah, no, 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 we've got, we've got scouts. We don't do that with X, but like, what was your story and what would be your advice to someone who maybe faces a little setback in the beginning with someone maybe doubting that this is really what they want to do with their lives? Yeah, I definitely uh, have a different uh, kind of perspective and where I came from. I was uh, fortunate enough to play uh, 11 years in the NFL as a tight end. So I knew eventually I wanted to get into the scouting ranks, but like you said, um, you know, players are kind of looked at in a negative fashion sometimes as though, you know, they don't really want to put in those type of hours, you know, they're spoiled, they're used to mm -hmm. just making, you know, millions of dollars and all those type of things. So there's a lot of uh, different stereotypes you have to, you know, kind of break through initially. I think uh, one of the things that benefited m me most was just trying to be proactive uh, with getting into scouting. I knew as a player, this whole question always came up is, do you want to get into coaching? Do you want to get into coaching? Yeah, you never hear scouting. No, no, it was always a coaching. And, you know, as I got older, older player, I was a mentor to, you know, the younger guys. So it was a little easier. They, you know, people would always see that, oh, you'd be a natural at it. But I was like, nah, you know, that's not what really interests me. I'm more into constructing the teams and seeing how those are built. Like whenever we'd make a draft pick, I was just really curious about that whole process. So I knew I wanted to get into it. And then I was fortunate enough to uh, get the internship with the uh, Bucks. Uh, there was a program being offered at that time, but you know, I really didn't know anyone's the organization anymore. You know, once I got my foot in the door, I was able, they asked me, you know, to start writing some reports. And I was like, hey, I, I've been doing this for the last yeah, couple of months. So, you know, it was pretty natural for me. And I think that really, you know, helped me uh, with them to see, you know, just how far along I was and to say, oh, this is not just another player just trying to, you know, get a job, but he's actually taking it serious. He's being proactive and wants to do it. It's great. And Mike, I know you have unfettered access now as your position to go onto campus and speak with coaches, but there was once a time, once upon a time where you didn't have all that access. And a lot of the folks on this call don't have that access. And yet, is there any advice for some of the people on this call to maybe be proactive and start getting a head start on that kind of stuff, even with the resources we have now, as far as access to watching college football? Yeah. I mean, I, I think the video is so readily available, um, NFL, college, just, you know, with, with the internet and, and the, all the platforms that are available now, you can, you can watch tape. And, and that's a big thing we tell a lot of, you know, people we talk to, start watching tape, start writing reports. Because when you come into the interviews, you know, for scouting assistant jobs and things like that, like that's one of the things we, we, we like to see is the experience. Now it's not a prerequisite, not everybody has that, and we'll teach you all that here, but uh, as much of that stuff as you can do, like it's it's great coming into the, the interview process. Um, but the one thing I'll say though, is whatever you do, I mean, I have two kids, they're 20 and 18, both in college. And I talk to them nonstop about, find something that you love, find something that you're passionate about. And I think that I can speak for John and Alex when, when I say that we're all three passionate about what we do. We're passionate about building a roster and and trying to strive to, to win a championship. So once you get your foot in the door or once you start, you know, digging into more what scouting is all about, you just need to make sure that you're passionate about it because that'll come across when you go to interviews and when you um, just when you step foot in the door. Um, and again, like we'll teach you everything you need to know about scouting as long as you're you're willing to learn and listen and, and 
and it's something that you feel deep down that that's that's what you want to do with your career. If you're in an elevator and you meet one of these, you know, young candidates, man or woman, and they ask you, what, what can I do? And what's your elevator speech? What's the minute or the 30 seconds that you would say in that elevator to say, hey, here's what I would tell you. Here's the keys. Here's the secret. What is that secret? It's going to be on you. This is, this is you know, a, a, a bottom line driven business. You either win or you don't. We get judged every Sunday. And, you know, I think a lot of the stereotypes, thankfully, um, that used to be here in the past, they're, they're gone. You know, we're, we're looking to hire qualified people. Wherever you are, whoever you come from, you have opportunities. It's just going to be hard. You're, you're trying to do a tough thing, work in the NFL, work in sports. There's a lot of people that want your jobs, and there's not a lot of jobs. Mike, let me ask you, because I feel like you've got the longest time doing this role. When you're hoisting a Lombardi trophy and you're on a boat parade, do you think back to those dreary years, maybe living out of a car? Like, How rewarding was it when you guys finally know all that work you put in just results in a Lombardi trophy in the end. This is a job, you know what I mean? Like it's, it's working in the NFL and people think that it's glamorous and, and it is, I mean, we, the, we all love what we do and it's a really cool thing to do, but it's, it's a job, you know, and, and people forget about the families and the, you know, the sacrifices that everybody have to make to make our jobs easier. Right. Just remember that, that, you know, there's, there's positive and negatives to this job too, just like any other job. Um, but again, if you love what you're doing, like all those long nights in the road, staying in cheap hotels. Uh, when I first started scouting, we didn't have cell phones. I didn't have a computer. It was calling cards, road, like you actually had an atlas or you had to print out directions, like starting to sound like an old man right now. MapQuest. But, yeah, I yeah MapQuest. Like all that stuff, like we had to do and, and like I wouldn't trade it for anything. Yeah. And Alex, if you want to jump in, talk about the friendships you'll make doing this at the entry level when you first get in. Like you guys are all in the same circles at all these events together. Explain kind of the friendships you'll make and really the, the long lasting relationships you'll get out of this job. Yeah, I just think, you know, the longer you're in it, you start to see a lot of uh, the same faces over and over. You guys are on the road together. Like, you know, Mike said, this is a grind. And when you're out there grinding together on the road, you just uh, naturally develop bonds. And I think that's the whole key to networking as well. And I think that's a whole other uh, aspect of this business is you got to know people. You got to, you know, you know, be out there and you know be able to be seen. If, if it's sending out email after email, call after call, it's just trying to get yourself in front of people. I, I think that's the biggest key to this business is, you know, just, again, just networking and, you know, that way you'll naturally move yourself up from there. At this time, we're going to be moving everyone into their breakout room. Ask away. No bad questions. I'm here to help. <laughs> Hi, Mike. Nice to see you again. Good to see I you, am, Michaela. I am now the director of football operations at Monta Vista High School. Do you feel as though you can excel in scouting at the NFL level without ever having played in the NFL? Uh... I would, I would say 100% yes, because you're looking at one that didn't, and I didn't, I didn't even play in college, so it's, it's pretty rare, but you're looking at an example of, of somebody that didn't. I think that going forward, I think a lot more women are playing football at a younger age, and they're, they're exposed to the game more, like, and growing up with it. I think in a few years, it's not, there's not going to be a lot of difference in that. We can teach you everything you need to know about scouting. You just have to to understand the the commitment you're making and the hours you're going to be working. But as long as you're willing to do all those things and make sacrifices and work your tail off, like you can succeed in this league. Hi, my name is Sydney Bryant, and I'm a graduate student at George Mason. My question is, when you're looking at players, obviously everybody is going to have a different opinion on them in some way, shape, or form between the scouts. Before those reports are kind of sent up to the next level or when it's really time to make those decisions, is there any conversation that happens between the scouts themselves, possibly trying to get everybody closer to an agreement or at least get your point across of this is what I saw versus what they saw? It's a great question. And yes, we definitely do that. And yes, we're definitely all over the place with our grades sometimes. So, you know, there's things, uh, and especially in the uh, winter time after um, scouts have got off the road and everything, they'll come in house and then we'll put together what we call pods. And essentially what this is, is the scouts will break up into like groups of four and then we'll have a list of players that we like. And then we'll go through, we'll watch these players and then we'll all come back from our different groups and we'll compare how we stack the players. Sometimes they're close, sometimes they're completely opposite. So, you know, I find myself going in there sometimes like, 
this couldn't have helped anything because all we did was make it more confusing. You love these guys and we hate that guy. Like, so I'm, I'm not envious of the GM uh, when situations like that come up, but uh, it's definitely, you just kind of try to state your case. Um, you know, if you're really passionate about something, that's what they'll tell you here is stand up on and stand on what you believe. Like they don't want anybody riding the fence. Like that doesn't help anybody. So if you feel passionate one way or another, state your case and state why. Hi, Mrs. Spitek. My name is Maya. I am the director of football operations at Princeton University. What can I do to keep learning the terminology, scouting, uh, just so when a personnel internship does open up, I'll be ready? Yeah, I think you're in a great spot for that. I mean, you, you're around football all day, so you get to kind of you know, witness how a football operation works, follow along in the recruiting, watch tape, you know, certainly there's a lot of people within Princeton that are um, evaluating potential recruits and then giving grades and writing reports and how do they build their, you know, their, their kind of catalog as to players they are looking at people that they want to have come play at Princeton, watch tape, write reports, talk to your coaches there. What are they looking for? you know, understand the process they go through before when they're evaluating players, because we're really doing the same thing. It's just they're looking at high schoolers and we're looking at college players. Hi, Mike. My name is Autumn Lockwood, and I am director of sports performance of women's basketball and women's soccer here at University of Houston. My question for you would be, what are the top three um, character questions that you ask college coaches when you're going um, on scouting visits about the players that you are inquiring? First and foremost is, does he love football? I mean, that's that's kind of a deal breaker. You know, if they say that he doesn't, then it's it's hard to get excited about bringing that guy into to our organization. And then I, I think the the next one is probably what kind of teammate is he? Intelligence, work ethic, those things kind of go hand in hand. Those are the three things. You know, if you, if you get a guy that's smart and he's willing to work hard, he's a good teammate and he loves football, that's a pretty good place to start right there. Hi again, Jula Harrington, I'm a senior at Tufts University. I'm the director of player development for our football team here. How important has social media become in the scouting world and does it make a difference if you recruit someone or not? It comes up every year, and those are definitely things we take into consideration. Um, you know, it talks about a player's awareness. If, you know, he's posting things that he probably shouldn't know, that's, you know, kind of a red flag that may require just some more digging into. So it's not that anything that will, you know, just completely write somebody off, but it will definitely mean, okay, maybe we need to pay a little more attention, do a deeper dive, uh, find out more about something that if, we, if it looks alarming. Hi, I'm Olivia Olson. I'm the coordinator of recruiting for LSU football. Have you ever had a player that you kind of took a risk on or like stood on the table for that maybe other people didn't agree with it, but you saw an intangible that they didn't? Yes, that happens every year. Anybody that tells you that they're right all the time in this business is absolutely lying to you. I mean, you're going to be wrong and you have to you have to accept that early on, right? Because if you dwell on the mistakes, it's going to hurt your ability to, like you're saying, take risk and stand on the table for guys in the future. Our teams are built through the draft and then they're supplemented with free agency and, and things like that. But the core of your team should be done through the draft. The stat of first round picks that end up making it in the NFL and being successful is like 50%. I think everybody that gets in this league, by the time they become an area scout and, and they get in my, my chair, they can evaluate talent. So they can watch the film and they can say, this guy can play in our league. But usually the ones that don't work are when we uh, misevaluate the person. Y'all aren't wrong with Devin, though. So. <laughs> Hello. Thank you, Mr. Spy Tech, for joining us today. My name is Elizabeth Toth. I am the Director of Football Operations at Quincy University. How do you handle making the coaching staff happy? And is it hard to compromise with them um, to get what they want and to make sure that you have a great um, team? I, know, I think it starts with communication, really. It's okay to have healthy dialogue, to not always agree but I think what we've established here in, in Tampa is one that Jason and BA have a great relationship so they can tell each other anything. They're going to be honest with each other. And then that just kind of, you know, um, matriculates down to, to us and our, and our uh, scouting department and then the coaching staff. So they know like, Hey, you may not agree with it, but I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you what, what I think and what I think we should do, or do we like this player? And, you know, I think the respect then is twofold. They give it back to you. And so it helps us, um, kind of get through some of those conversations. You make a group decision and then, you know, if we draft a player, 
he's a buck, so let's go. Or if we cut a player, we collectively decided to cut a player and move on. We have a great thing going here in Tampa, and that's one of the reasons why. <laughs>